Don in London, hello. It's March 3rd, 2013. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. Just getting all my bits of paper sorted out. Addict, addicted to what in my case? Well, alcohol. I'm an alcoholic in recovery. My name is Don and I'm an alcoholic. And I'm in recovery one day at a time. What's made it possible over the years? A fellowship. And that fellowship is AA. Alcoholics Anonymous. If you're in the fellowship of AA, you know I don't speak for you ever. I never speak for you. I can't. You speak for yourself, wherever you may be, in your own way, and where it's, sort, where it's right for you to do so. I share here some experience, strength and hope of how it works, how the fellowship has worked for me over the years, and how I got there. And I especially share about how the 12 steps or 12 principles of life have helped me be free of the burden of me, free to be myself in just about every situation, although sometimes old behaviour comes back when I'm under extreme pressure, and when I'm under extreme pressure, where do I go? I go to the fellowship to listen to some experience, strength and hope from other people, and also ask my friends, what would you do in this situation? So I'm just learning about life, one day at a time what I can and cannot do, what interests me, what does not interest me, what I might want to join in with, what I might want to exclude myself from, because it's not good for me. I don't know that it's ever good for me to go down the pub and socialise with people who are drinking, because it's very attractive, because it might fix me, but it wouldn't. It would just put me back to starting over again. Not completely, because I have the wisdom of what it's like to be in recovery and I'd rather prefer to stay in recovery. My choice. And it is my choice and that's based on what I've learned in the Fellowship of AA. So what is it? I'm going to share the AA preamble and then some thoughts and feelings or feelings and thoughts about how, how the Fellowship helps me on a daily basis, namely around the 12 steps and March is all about step 3. But I'll talk about that in a minute. First of all, the AA preamble. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. So the common problem is alcoholism. The common problem is we don't know how to stop. The common problem is what do we do when we're sober? So it's all about learning how to do these things. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. That's it. You don't have to pass anything. If you have a desire to stop drinking, for whatever reason, then you're welcome. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not, this is what it's not, not allied with any sect, not allied with any denomination, not allied politically, not allied to other organisations or institutions, not allied and does not wish to engage in any controversy, not allied and neither endorses nor opposes any causes. But we as human beings probably are allied to all of those things and that's our own stuff. We're, al we're allowed to be ourselves in other words. So you don't lose all sense of proportion, you probably get your sense of proportion back and our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So I suppose the ultimate aim is to be sober and free to make the best choice you can around what is possible today. And that's what Fellowship does for me <coughs> and has done for several years. So I'm very lucky in that respect and I've made friends along the way and I've probably made a few enemies too but not, not to the point where I would exclude them in any sort of way within fellowship, but I might have to exclude them in terms of what is right and wrong for me on a daily basis. So you get your choices back, choices to be with the people who are right for you and let go of the people who are wrong for you. Not always easy if you love them. Anyway, uh, March is about step three and your higher power. And I say your higher power because you're entitled to be affiliated, allied and part of something which includes your higher power. So if your higher power is God, 
or your higher power is the higher wisdom that we learn whatever it is it's your higher power which can work for you in fellowship and the way it works is this opening a locked door by letting go I can remember when I was having a nervous breakdown and it was a monumental one the offer of a different job in a different part of the organization came through I would have seen it as a demotion rather than an opportunity to get back on my feet my pride and ego locked the door firmly to the opportunity if indeed it did exist anymore probably not and at the same time there was a every legal reason there was every legal, legal reason not to do so and the question was or is today do I want to be right or did I want to be happy well I, I couldn't see any happiness at all back then and I wanted to be right so I followed the legal advice I couldn't even ask those questions at the time and said without prejudice and said in ignorance of what is right for me that was very difficult legality put me in a hole and I kept on digging deeper and deeper and deeper with advice which was wrong for me you know, the uh, psycho psychological advice was let go, let them fire you let them do whatever they want to do but for Christ's sake don't even think about going back there because it will kill you so I had a load of conflicting things going on and because I was when you're in a nervous breakdown you don't know what, what is right or wrong and you go with the advice of what you think is right and what fit, fits right with yourself to get yourself back to where you were what I didn't realise there was no going back after this nervous breakdown so opening a locked door by letting go I've come to understand in recovery is I don't have to be right if I try and be right legally or because I'm entitled or because my expectations are right doesn't make any difference I let go and ask about what is right for me in, for my sobriety so the rest of my life can work in recovery I've often seen the problem I have with letting go knowing that I have right on my side knowing I have a legal position which is right and knowing I ought to fight because that's what we do in just about every instance of being right the amount of effort required would have led me back to the insanity of having to do the same things over and over and never certain of getting the results even though I was entitled and it had every right to an expectation of fairness life do not work that way does it as you know and of course the world is not fair somebody else will have a different opinion somebody else will have a different outlook and somebody else will have more power and more money to overcome any legal battle I thought I ought to fight letting go righteousness is a real and helpful way forward in recovery for me today even if I am right it won't make me happy letting go and finding a different way forward with the help of others always takes me back to serenity today and <coughs> you know that we are hit with all sorts of legal matters all day long sometimes or we have rights which are being trampled on every single day or so it seems and what is the right way forward well with a bit of help from my friends they give me a different outlook by letting go a shut door the shut door to other people's wisdom experience strength and hope around similar issues and how they dealt with them so it's not all about me solving my own problems standing on my own two feet and all of that it's about getting better advice to what is the best, best way forward even, even if it's to sit still and wait to see if the situation is going to change any or do I really need to do something urgently which I haven't seen yet so it's not all about me winning it's about me living sobriety first and the rest of life can happen in fellowship I realized no one was against me actually no, nobody was against me but there were some people who might lead me down the wrong garden path and the help I received was always to do with keeping sober and then sorting out the best of the, the rest of the chaos of life letting go expectations expectations were resentments under construction letting go entitlements and concentrating solely on being sober because if I was sober again for long enough nothing was going to be a battle and most things a conversation and asking what is possible on a daily basis and the other thing which happened whether I had an expectation or an entitlement in a legal way 
if I handed it over to legal people rather than do it all myself, if that was possible, rage, anger and frustration became the problem of the legal people who probably didn't have rage, anger and frustration at it, it was their job, rather than me, let go. It proved to be a necessity in my recovery and I was very lucky, you know, I was full of it that I had to sort it out because I was the I was the problem and I had to be my own solution. Well, if, <laughs> what proved true, uh, I had the problem and on my own there was no solution. All through growing up, family, community and society, society was all about standing on your own two feet. This is me in the 60s, 70s, 80s and 40s. Put on, putting on a brave face or a poker face so that no one could read what was behind the mask unless it was a truly intimate relationship with a girl I guess and even then ego would come into it because I wouldn't want to show weakness in front of the person I loved I needed to be strong for them so a poker face so that no one could read what was behind the mask and an ego which is all about self-sufficiency and self-determination well in some ways that's good it means we strive hard to prove ourselves which is a good thing but not to the extreme and exclusion of getting help when we need it. Taken to extreme lengths of hiding behind a poker face stopped me being vulnerable when I was, to, I didn't show vulnerability, and stopped me from understanding my feelings which I suppressed, and in later years with a drink in hand and a rage and fury burning in my soul because the whole world went to crap. You can't keep going on your own all the way. It's just lonely, and that's where I had ended up proving to be a very unhealthy way of life for me and more reliance on a drink rather than reliance on, a, on trusted confidants who are available if only I had known. People were all around me and on my side and they could see I was struggling but because I wouldn't let them in. Indeed I was too frightened to let anyone in at the end. I was so broken I just didn't want to be ex exposed to the friendship or even the love of other people it just hurt. An advice delivered when matters got extreme were extreme suggestions in the end, built up through time and far too big for anybody to cope with one day at a time. Letting go and asking for help, even with the simplest of matters, can build confidence that there is a world of wisdom around us if only we can ask for help. And that's where we get to in the final days of addiction. We are so stuck and we are befriended by the thing that's killing us. In fact, it becomes a killer malady with a killer substance or whatever it is. Letting go having to get life right first time, letting go the notion that I'm in charge of what needs to happen in relationships, means I am no longer alone in my decisions. Having been educated to be first in any endeavour and then realising every endeavour requires the help of one sort or another, life has become softer and easier and no longer a hardship on a daily basis. I still need use my own experience, strength and hope as far as it goes, and then check out then check out where I have got to with the people I trust these days. Building trust in other people, allowing them and allowing myself to express feelings first and then think about situations. It does not automatically mean we come to the right answer. Sometimes the right answer comes from listening and also having the patience to wait and find out more information. Or simply the situation changes and what ceases, and then whatever it was ceases to be an issue again. So sometimes we need to do something quickly and we go as far as we can and we may need to ask for help in that. Nothing wrong with that. We're just getting another opinion. So if the opinions are the same as ours, can you help me? You don't have to do it on your own. This is the beauty of life. On the one hand we think we have to rule the world, if that's where we, we are coming from. On the other hand we can't rule the world, not alone. We're a part of it, we're not the main, we're not the main leader. And if we think we are, there might be something wrong with us, I suspect. There is a, a euphemism, or a saying, or a suggestion, there is no I in team. That's true. There is no letter I in the word team. Very true. And when we look at all the aspects of life and situations of life, which need to be addressed by more than one person, 
it is just about necessary to consult and be aware of everyone around us. And being aware that there is no point of view, there is a point of view different to mine in every situation. That is true. There will always be a, a different point of view in every situation. It means letting go of being right and opening, opening the door to a discussion, negotiation, or parley, or whatever it need to be, is far better but than causing chaos or more chaos by being right and on my own. When we start to see the world through other people's eyes, by hearing their experience, strength and hope in recovery, the door opens to how life works in sobriety. And we learn that asking for help is not a vulnerability, it is a strength to be utilised just about every day in recovery. So, <coughs> not knowing the answer, and having the vulnerability to say, I don't know the answer, and if somebody turns around and says, well, by your age, surely you ought to know the answer by now. The simple answer is, I don't have the life experience to know the answer. So get off my case, or you know, help me if you can. And if you are looking down on me, because I don't know the answer, I'm with the wrong person. I can be angry about it, but uh, let them go, let them be. So, letting go in recovery, it means no more guessing games about where other people are coming from. There are people going through all sorts of experience in recovery, which can make them seem like good people, or bad people, or ugly people. In other words, people in recovery are the same as people all over the planet, driven to behave in good ways, bad ways, and ugly ways, depending on what is happening to them right now. If you ask a person behaving badly in recovery to help you, the help received, if any, may, be, ha may have a bad purpose and a bad emotional content behind it. Stick with the winners. But who are they? So I put that as a question mark. Stick with the winners. Find those who are serene. I don't know. I don't, I don't know the answer to this. We make choices one day at a time, sometimes to the good or bad or ugly. With the serenity prayer in mind, it is more likely that we understand what people can do what people cannot do, and we learn the wisdom to know the difference far sooner rather than later. We need not prolong the agony. So that serenity prayer comes in very handy. And he said, if you if you say to another person, what can you do and what can't you do, and what's your wisdom about that, they may say, oh, you're putting me on the spot now. I said, well, I'm not trying to, because I'm on, I'm on the same spot. I'm not so sure what I can and cannot do right now. So let's talk about it. And when it comes to romance and finance and recovery, the serenity prayer is equally good at sorting out different situations far sooner than later. In recovery, we realise that holding on for too long and trying beyond belief to keep things going is not necessarily the answer. And the serenity prayer really does help, can do, love and be involved, cannot do, cannot make them love me and cannot get their involvement. Knowing what we can do and what we cannot do and the wisdom to know the different happens far faster if we just apply some simple understandings. Powerless over the emotional and spiritual state of other people, especially when they, especially when we desire them. So we, we don't control our own emotionals, particularly either we desire or we don't. We'd like or don't like. It's our feelings. So we're not so powerful over them either, but w what we can do and can't do becomes more clear. So, especially when they de if we desire them and they don't desire us. If they do desire us, wonderful. If they don't, it is also wonderful, because we won't sit around wondering. We find out the difference in outlook and resolve, and let go, move on without doing further harm to ourselves or others. Today. Now, we don't just fall in love, or do we? Emotions. If we actually know the truth of where another person is coming from far sooner than later, we don't languish in abject, abject misery with unrequited love, because we're wasting our time. You know, if we wait for a person, either there's a spark there and something to work with or not. How am I feeling this morning? A bit washed out, not so certain about what is going. What I, will, I was not so certain about what I was going to write to, about or reflect on this morning, but somehow the words came out. Yeah, and then the words tumble out one way or another. I suppose this is living in the day. 
because I was shaping my let go and open the door which is all part of step three step three let go and let God in let go and let the higher power in let go and let the wisdom of the world in and I I suppose I was not trying to contrive anything but share what I was feeling right now so that's good so a bit washed out a bit tired that's okay and then the words tumble out at me I suppose this is living in the day not trying to contrive the day to be something not trying to make it so and I have an invitation to go out tonight with my best friend which makes me smile whether we go out or not is not the issue <laughs> and I'll be smiling either way because I don't know what the day will bring or how they will be or I will be late learning to love and stop holding on to people learning how to be loved back and accepting the love is as it can be and seeing the difference between how it was in the past and how it is in recovery that is love without conditions is beyond a belief and an entitlement it is reality today so there you go love is a reality unconditional love so it doesn't matter where the actions or activities go it's underlying uncondi unconditional love being in company fantastic company not available that's all right it's just the way it is today and there's always another day providing I keep sober and I keep on track living in the moment of now where emotional and spiritual make sense all the feelings happy sad good bad love hate uh, joyful not joyful all those feelings are right in the moment of in the moment of now so it may not always go our way and we will feel dis disappointments at the same time it doesn't spoil sobriety sobriety is the can do can't do right now and the wisdom in doing it the serenity prayer a restoration to serenity or sanity or whatever it might be to God or in good conscience whatever your your higher power is normally letting go being right opening the door to being vulnerable and those who see that we don't know the answer may have a suggestion for us so I don't need to be right at all ever ever again no I don't actually so the serenity prayer to God or in good conscience God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference in the moment, minute, hour and just for today